and I wanted something different and uh, didn't fancy a Maserati. I wasn't too keen on Ferraris at the time and um, that fitted the bill. Italian design, big American engine, even sat at the traffic lights. Um, they, they are very full on. The engine note, it, uh, it really is a buzz. Di Tommaso was not Italian, originally he was from uh, Argentina, uh, the family were cattle uh, ranchers, hence the logo on the front of the car. At the time um, he was very um, uh, vociferous against the uh, Peronist uh, regime and uh, was obliged to leave in a bit of a hurry. He met um, Elizabeth Haskell. Uh, who was an um, uh, independent uh, American lady who also enjoyed racing motor cars. They had a relationship and uh, married. She was uh, linked uh, indirectly uh, to Ford. So as you can see, things, wheels start to, cogs start to mesh and things start to, things start to turn. Di Tommaso, uh, together with um, his new wife, went to Italy. Uh, where he started producing uh, small single-seater race cars. Um, then things were developing, as we say, into the Valoranga, into the Langosta, into the Pantera. One of the most important cars that we have is the uh, Valoranga. This is one of the three surviving prototype uh, Valoranga's which were built by Fisore. This was Di Tommaso's first venture into producing a road car. Di Tommaso then fell out with um, Fisore, he took the order away from him and um, allowed his own company, Gear, uh, to build the fiberglass Valoranga's which are um, more widely known. Di Tommaso produced uh, a sports racing chassis in collaboration with Carol Shelby. Because of Shelby's involvement with the Shelby Cobras and the um, Shelby Mustangs, he was uh, too busy with Ford and that project was dropped. At the same time, uh, Gia had produced uh, detailed drawings and a body shell for ISO. Um, ISO then had no real wish to go into a rear engine sports car so Di Tommaso was left with um, a really good body shell and a really good sports racing chassis so he did the logical thing of putting both together um, because of the fallout or the disagreements with, uh, with Shelby not taking up the, uh, the option on the chassis uh, Di Tommaso uh, called the resultant car a, man a Mangusta uh, Mangusta being Italian for mongoose the mongoose is the only animal which is uh, known to take on a cobra and kill it. Various things had, uh, had come to fruition where within uh, Di Tommaso's own little empire. Uh, he'd made contacts with Ford uh, through family connections and uh, Ford were also looking to produce um, a road-going sports car of their own. This was really the project that they were dreaming of, Italian style and uh, big American engine. The Americans uh, would love it and indeed they, they did. The, the styling for the, for the, for the year was, uh, was phenomenal. Ford uh, pumped a lot of money into the project. Um, Di Tommaso was uh, a little bit optimistic in as much as he was expected and in fact did uh, confirm that they would produce 8,000 units a year. Ford's failure was uh, not realising that there was no way on God's earth that was going to happen. This led to a lot of um, uh, animosity. Unfortunately, uh, Henry Ford decided that enough was enough and just slammed the door shut. Uh, what he didn't realise was that uh, Di Tommaso was wise enough uh, to have his own body moulds, uh, pressings in Italy and um, even with the original contract between Ford and Di Tommaso, Di Tommaso still maintained the rights to produce these cars and sell them within Europe. Um, so Di Tommaso was the one who had um, won three times over. He owned Kia which he sold to Henry Ford. Uh, he sold Henry Ford the package for the uh, Pantera, which Ford paid for. Um, 
and then virtually Ford gave it him all back for nothing. Um, <laughs> you couldn't write it. The uh, body shell, the style of the car, was designed by an expat American called Tom Jada. Um, the underpinnings uh, were designed by uh, none other than uh, Delara, who subsequently went on to work for Lamborghini uh, and even today produces uh, mainly uh, racing car chassis, with it being mid-engine, uh, very short exhaust pipes, very short headers, uh, very small um, silencer. It is a box. <laughs> Not so much of a silencer, but it's a beautiful noise, made a hell of a noise. The Pantera wasn't uh, so much uh, a throw-together um, as the Mangusta was. The braking system had to work, um, engine and gearbox had to make uh, properly and produce a good, fast, safe car. And that's exactly what he did. Other cars as well, which were intended for America but never made it. The four-door Deauville, which was specifically designed as a, a competitor to uh, the uh, Jaguar of the day and also the big four-door uh, Mercedes of the day. All the cars were intended for America, but again, the Deauville never made it. But he continued to produce cars in relatively small numbers and sold throughout Europe and the rest of the world. When I first started in business, that was back in 1983, uh, we specialised in Jaguar. I, I got to know a little bit about uh, Di Tommaso and the, uh, and the Panteras, and um, all of a sudden they, the business started to sidestep. The beauty was, nobody knew anything about Di Tommaso. Um, big American V8, yes there are plenty of specialists well capable of handling an American V8, but the rest was a total mystery. The mark itself uh, to me is, uh, is so special, the development of Di Tommaso himself, the type of person um, that, uh, that he was. Now uh, today we are the uh, only main specialist for Di Tommaso cars uh, in the UK. For me, it's um, I come down to the toy shop every morning. Yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs>